Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. I hope you're all well and uh, things are going fine for you. Um, today, it's uh, something walking on my face. Today is another Bantam D7 video. Um, we're going to have a look at the rear wheel, get that back together. So that will be uh, wheel bearings and uh, brakes and a new tire and tube. So um, I shan't waffle on too much. We'll get straight into it. Uh, just to say, thanks very much for tuning in and watching. It's very much appreciated. So, um, right, let's get on. Right, I very much doubt if you can hear me over all the noise, but um, we are warming up the bearing housing on the rear hub, ready to refit the um, sprocket and brake side bearing. So, once it's nice and warm, I'll bring you back. I won't have to shout anymore. Right, well, the bearing went in very easily. Um, quite, quite pleased with that. Uh, so easily, in fact, that I didn't get a chance to um, push the button on the camera. So I'm not going to take it out, just for the sake of the camera. But um, top tip, don't forget to put the um, uh, thrust washer in there, because you need that. It sets the distance of the bearing, and that sets the distance of the brake plate, and obviously the... Um, engagement of your brake shoes if like me you have to make another one on the lathe because uh, it's a bit gnarly the old one um, don't forget to make the center hole um, big enough to clear the cone on the axle because otherwise you'll end up with uh, not enough engagement on your bearing surface and also um, not enough um, axle sticking through so that's not good um, so yeah don't forget to do that so that's in we're now going to put the locking ring in. Um, the locking ring has been cleaned up. I cleaned all the holes up, um, just tidied up the holes. As you can see, they were, you know, in quite bad condition, really. Um, they've been undone with a punch, I imagine, several times in their lives. Um, right, I'm just going to put a little bit of grease on, a tiny bit of grease, um, not the kind of grease application that we found when we took it apart, but just to stop the threads from galling. Uh, it's quite a fine thread and hopefully we can get it engaged without cross threading it now I've got a new a new gadget which I'll show you and it is an adjustable peg spanner um, when I took the uh, when I took all this apart I got a message from aid uh, who said don't go making a peg spanner just get one of these and it'll do you for every lock ring you ever come across and um yeah came off amazon it's a laser um laser brand adjustable spanner so fantastic thank you aid and uh it's just the job so we can um we can screw that into there without worrying about damaging the uh, the nut or the locking ring rather oops helps if you uh, pay attention Instead of rabbiting on, anyway, in it goes. There it still turns, which is a good a good sign. So that's that step done, and uh, I'm following the. Um, the BSA service sheets doing this job so um, we're going along in the sequence that uh, the BSA recommend so we're not just ad-libbing I just had to stop you there because um, remember that grease that I smeared on the threads well I had it on my fingers and then I somehow managed to get it all over the lenses of my glasses so yeah that was that was good wasn't it right upend the wheel and uh, I shall just move the camera so that you'll be able to see the next step. There we go. I do apologise about the light. There's nothing I can do about it. Uh, light streaming in through the window and I don't have blinds fitted. So um, we're just going to have to grin and bear it, I'm afraid. Right, I'm going to put a little bit of, bit of grease on the axle where it goes through the bearing. Just a tiny bit just to stop it from um, seizing up. I 
There we go. We're in. So uh, we just need to fit the other bearing on the other side now. And we're well on our way. So let me just get set up for that because I'll need something to stand the wheel on. A couple of wooden blocks or something. And um, we'll go from there. Right, slightly better vantage point for you. Uh, a little bit more grease on the bearing. Again, just a smear. Got the housing warm. So uh, hopefully we should be all right. Tiny a little bit on the shaft. Again, it's just to stop stuff galling, metal on metal and all that. It isn't, uh, doesn't need to be lubricated. The bearing is lubricated and is shielded. Right, I've got a socket that should do the job. We're on some wooden blocks so that we're, uh, we're not going to damage anything on the uh, underside or displace anything. It'd help if I could keep it dry. Like the feel of it though don't like the feel of it one sec right we're all good um i just had the bearing a little bit squint not all the way down so uh she's good to go i don't like that methodology of fitting bearings quite frankly um i find it a bit i just don't like hitting bearings um just something that i don't like to do so a little bit of grease on that tiniest amount and uh we need to get the speedo drive on. Now I've not rebuilt the brake back plate yet, so we're not going to be able to nip this up. Uh, but we can get it lowered into place and uh, engaged on the dogs at least. Okay, in fact before we do that, let's just put some grease inside it. A little bit to get it going. And we will re lubricate it via the grease nipples uh, properly. Just a little bit. Right. There we go. So that's the speedo drive. Just check it's going round. It is. And uh, now then, we need a washer and a nut. Ah, the washer is in my new parts. Let me just grab that. Right, I think it's as, as good a time as any to have a look at some of the spares that have come in. And um, Sometimes in my videos I say my usual supplier, and um, that tends to be these people. Uh, Dragonfly Motorcycles, they are uh, in Bungie in Suffolk, and uh, I like getting stuff from them because it comes in these sort of old brown packaging with Triumph and BSA written on it, and uh, it's like getting a package from the 60s, so I quite like that. And then um, inside, wrapped up in a brown paper bag, you get your spares. So let's have a look at what we've got. Empty it out. And we've got um, swinging arm bushes. And we've got a brake pedal spring because I noticed that that was missing. We've got our chain adjuster plates. And there's the washer that we need for our speedo drive. Um, I also uh, picked up a brake rod spring that came from Lancashire. Um, classic bike parts up in the northwest. Um, I've used him a couple of times. I think he's uh, he's quite good. He's got quite a lot of parts. He's on eBay. And then um, I also picked up a set of um, Girling classic brake shoes. Um, I can't remember the supplier. I've not used them before. Again, it was on eBay. Um, and we've also got a tube and a tire. So we're doing all right. I think we've pretty much got what we need. So. This is the part we need for the next job, so we'll get back to the wheel. 
Right, so we're back over at the bench with our wheel and um, our speedo drive is fitted and working. Uh, we fit our washer and then um, one of our nuts. I'm just going to do my old trick of putting a little bit of grease on the thread just to stop it from from galling or binding and uh, I think we're going to have to hold the other side to tighten that down obviously you tighten the two nuts against each other once you've got the brake plate on but we're going to have to assemble the brake plate first so bear with me and I will um, get that sorted out okay well that's gone on there nice and hand tight and uh, there was just a little bit of a burr at the end of the thread there which needed cleaning up uh, one thing you don't do, if you can't get a nut like that to start, is reach for the mole grips and put it on the other side because all you'll do is destroy the thread on the other side. Um, if you've got one of these, very, very handy uh, thread file. Uh, this is a um, inch uh, threads, imperial threads thread file, so 14, 26, 11, 20 TPI on that side. And you've got uh, 18, 12, 22, and 16 on that side. And um, very, very useful uh, piece of kit for dressing up threads when you can't get a nut to start. Very useful indeed. I've used it many, many times over the years that I've had it. And it was made by Sykes Pickavant, made in England, number 015600. So there you go. You want to get yourself one of those i think you'll find it is a very handy tool right next job is to assemble the brake plate so we'll get the wheel out of the way and we'll have a look at that right well i just um got on with it and um rebuilt the brake back plate not a difficult job i'm sure most of you if not all of you have, uh, have done it many times before um, i put a little bit of grease on the pivot there is a, a grease fitting, but I don't intend using it because I think that's just a surefire way to get grease all over the linings. A um, little bit of grease on the pivot, a little bit on the face of the cam, a little bit of grease on the um, the fixed pivot down here. And uh, that was it. And obviously, change gloves before handling the linings because if you've got any grease on your fingers, um, you can almost guarantee it's going to go all over your linings. So, yeah, that's it done. Just fit one shoe. Uh, up to the um, pivot and the cam with the other shoe sort of facing out at 90 degrees line it up snap it over jobs are good and no special tools required uh, I haven't fitted the um, the actuating arm yet because I'll do that when it's when the wheels back in the bike and I know which way it's got to go but I mean it's a square so <laughs> I haven't got too many connotations to worry about but I'll do that later uh, Ooh, I was just going to show you the grease that I use. I've not long been using this, but I find it really good. And um, when I tell you about products or places where I buy things from, uh, I promise you I'm not doing a product placement or a, a endorsement or anything like that. Nobody pays me to, to talk about these things. I pay the same price as you guys do. But, you know, if I find something good or I find somewhere good to get stuff from, I'll let you know about it. Anyway, this is the grease. And... Uh, it's uh, American stuff, Lucas Oil Products, uh, same people that make the um, the assembly oil that I use. And it's um, Red N Tacky. There you go. A bit like fish and chips. And uh, that's what it looks like. But I find it quite good. It stays put. It seems pretty good stuff. It does exactly what it says on the tin. It's red and it's tacky. So there you go. Okay, right. We need to get this thing back into the wheel so I'll go grab the wheel right so as you can see I have dropped the um, the back plate into the brake drum and I've also fitted now the um, the actuating arm I think it's in the right position and the reason why I've done this is because I want to run the shoes around the drum and try and create a witness mark and um, I'm doing that to, to figure out if I've got basically the drum in the right position uh, sorry the, the back plate in the right position in the drum because if it's riding high we're going to lose um, 
contact with our friction material and if it's too low then it could run off um onto the um the sort of where the where the drum finishes and the wheel starts or the hub starts if you if you like and um, there's like a there's a step there and we don't want it running onto uh, onto that step so um i'm just going to run it round now and um and see if we can <laughs> if i can hold the brake on uh that's better right Let's see if i can get a full revolution out of it okay we'll have a look at that see if it's made a mark it should have done oh yes it has and um yeah it does look as though it's running in the right right part of the drum although i have to say i don't know if you can pick that up on the camera it's quite difficult it does look as though it's contacting um let me let me get into the camera there we go it looks like it's contacting this area here well across this area here this band here more than here or here so that indicates to me that there'll either be a bit of running in to do a bit of bedding in to do or we might have to machine the linings and i've done that before on an mz um well it was an mz hub that was fitting to another bike and um i had to make a little fixture because the brake shoes kept riding up the back plate but i don't think that would happen on this because the lower pivot is quite a you know you, you've got these these crescent shaped pieces fitting onto the pivot so they're quite a positive location but yeah on the other one that i did the, the brake shoes wanted to move away um, against the cutting forces so i had to make a clamp that went between here and here um, i made it with a little threaded uh, like a, like a turnbuckle almost and it tightened up and, and pulled them in but um i don't know where that is i might still have that actually but anyway i don't think i'd have to do that with this but hopefully we won't have to do any machining we'll just we'll let them bed in for a little bit and maybe pop it out again and have a look see if it's um if it's contacting across the full width of the uh, friction material but anyway that's that's not for now is it that's for uh, for later on but we'll see see what the brakes are like because um i don't think bantam brakes are fantastic when they're in great condition but um well, modern linings, I imagine, will help, but um, from what I've heard, modern linings will help, but we certainly don't want known faults in there, if we can help it. Right, I'm going to get my two knuckle breakers, and I'm going to um, nip up the nut. Oh, don't drop the wheel, it's probably the best advice. Anyway, let's get these nipped up. Help if, I've, help if I've got the spanner on in the right place, wouldn't it? There we go. That's better. Performing a little bit better now. Okay. We won't go bananas with them. That's good. So, get it back up on the blocks. Oh! I'm determined to drop this, aren't I? There we go. Oh, come on, Dean. Perform. Right. Tire and tube next. So I'll go away and do that. Well, there you go, guys. There's our Bantam rear wheel um, overhauled. I deliberately didn't film fitting the tire because I'm not me when I do tire fitting. So uh, best avoided, I think. Um, maybe one day I'll make myself a, a tyre fitting um, pole in here, you know, sort of removable thing like what Dale Swager has. But uh, until then, I'll just have to continue grunting and <laughs> swearing on the floor. But um, yeah, I spared you that bit. I'm, I'm sure you're uh, very glad. Anyway, um, there it is. It looks all right, I think. It's a um, Kenda Classic. And... Uh, they're made out in the Far East, but uh, I don't know, I'm sure it'll be perfectly fine. 
Um, it's an exact copy of the original Dunlop pattern, which is why I went for it. Uh, I wanted the classic look. And um, your choice is quite limited, really, I suppose, um, unless you want to go for a more modern tyre, which I didn't want to do. But, um, yeah, we don't need a high-performance handling tyre, really, on a 175 Bantam. I think, you know, if it rains and you don't go on your arse, it's done its job. So, yeah, I'm more than happy with it. And, uh, as I say, it looks, it looks the part as well. Um, the only other thing I've done, really, is, is to just loosely fit the um, chain adjusters. I put the new blocks on that we that we got and I fitted a new nut on each side as well um, just to make the job a little bit easier when it goes back together and they're um, quarter British Standard Cycle um, just in case you need to know if you need to order some for your own bike uh, so have a look at the other side there we go yeah you know pretty much as you've seen um, with the addition of the chain adjuster so there we are um, we can put this to one side and uh, pull the swinging arm back out again and uh, I think um, the next video will be doing the bushes on the swinging arm so I'm looking forward to having a crack at that and, and getting that back together but uh, as ever thank you very much indeed for watching I do appreciate the time that you spend with me here in the workshop and uh, to all my subscribers existing and uh, brand new Thank you very much indeed. Um, please keep the comments coming. I'm getting some fantastic positive comments. It's really encouraging. Um, you know, it makes me want to come back out here and make another video. And uh, that's what it's all about, I think. So thanks very much. And uh, I shall see you, uh, see you soon. Bye for now.